Hello everyone, welcome to Content Hub, our pilot episode of Mid-Latitude Cyclone. In this lesson, we'll be focusing more on the concept Mid-Latitude Cyclone. We'll be looking at the characteristics of the system as well as its associated weather conditions. So please stay tuned, subscribe, and like the video. Right, so what is a Mid-Latitude Cyclone? Also known as a Temperate Cyclone, an Extra Tropical Depression or just a frontal depression. These cyclones, they are called the low pressure weather systems that consist of two fronts, the cold front and the warm front. Now for us to understand the mid-latitude cyclones better, we need to understand the area of formation. Where does this cyclone form? Where do they develop? Now our mid-latitude cyclone, they develop between 30 degrees and 60 degree latitude. Let us write it down. They develop between 30 degrees and 60 degree latitude in either hemisphere, whether it is in the northern hemisphere or it is in the southern hemisphere. Now, if we go back to our global air circulation in grade 11, you will recall the prevailing winds that are found between 30 and 60 degree latitude the subtropical westerlies. The westerly winds. Now, these winds are the ones that are going to determine the general direction of this system. They are the result why the mid-latitude cyclone moves from west to east. Now, they are going to ask you in your examination, to determine the general direction of the mid-latitude cyclone. You should be able to recall that the general direction of the mid-latitude cyclone, it moves from west to east. Or in simple terms, you can just say that they move eastwards. Mid-latitude cyclone, they move eastwards. The reason they move from west to east, it is due to the westerly winds. They are driven by westerly winds. Now, in the next section of this lesson, we continue with the characteristics of this mid-latitude cyclone. We want to understand when do they occur. It is important for you to structure your answer in a really smart way. Mid-latitude cyclones, they occur all year around, but only affect our country, Republic of South Africa, in winter. Now, we need to understand why is this the case. We will need to go back a little bit in grade 11 to understand the position of the ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone. Yes, the Intertropical Convergence Zone. Now, what happens to the ITCZ? Suppose that this red line here represents our ITCZ. As the seasons changes, we are having summer and we are having winter. The ITCZ, as seasons changes, it migrates north and south across the equator, following the apparent movement of the sun. This is to say it follows the hemisphere that is experiencing summer when the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer the itcz is going to migrate further north when the southern hemisphere that is us when we are experiencing summer the itcz is going to uh, is going to cross below the equator so yeah so the itcz is going to cross below the equator when we are experiencing summer now, when it is summer in the southern hemisphere, the ITCZ migrates southwards. And as a result, the pressure belts that we are having here will also move further south. And as a result, this will push our mid-latitude cyclone. This guy here is going to push the mid-latitude cyclone further away from the interior, the land. So as this guy moves eastwards from west to east, this cyclone will not touch 
the interior. As a result, in summer, we are not impacted by the mid-latitude cyclone. But now it becomes winter. What happens to the position of the ITCZ? It means that the ITCZ is now going to migrate further north across the equator northwards because at this time when we are experiencing winter in the southern hemisphere the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer that good let us continue yeah now when the itcz has moved further north what happens to the pressure cells here our pressure cells they now migrate further north as a result this allows our mid-latitude cyclone to also come closer to the interior, to the land. So as this guy moves from west to east under the influence of the westerly winds that we spoke about earlier, this guy will eventually pass over the land, bringing winter rainfall to the west coast as well as the rest of the interior. That good? Yes. Now, before we go any further, I want us to discuss the stages of the mid-latitude cyclones. The mid-latitude cyclones has the following stages. It starts off with the initial stage, followed by the wave stage, which is also called the development stage, like we said. And then we have the mature stage. From the mature stage, then the mid-latitude cyclone progresses into the occlusion stage before it dissipates. Now let us try to understand what is happening in the initial stage. Now the diagram for the initial stage, they are going to give it to you in this way, whereby uh, this arrow represents the warm westerly winds and this arrow represents the cold polar easterlies. Now the two air masses meet at 60 degree latitude, a region that we refer to as the polar front. So the cold polar easterlies meet with the warm westerlies at the polar front. Now it is important to note that the two air masses do not mix and they remain separate from each other during the initial stage. Now as the mid-latitude cyclone progresses in its development, it goes into the wave stage whereby now the warm westerly wind starts to push further polewards and the cold polar easterlies push further north as this happens the uh, the shape of the polar front starts to be deformed due to the disturbance that is occurring at the polar front the disturbance may be due to different temperatures that occurs between the land and the sea or mainly due to the velocity at which these two air masses move. Note that the cold air moves faster than the warm air. Now, when this happens, it creates a shape that looks like a wave, and we refer to this stage as the wave stage. At this time, you have your warm air that rises above the cold air, and as a result, right at the bottom of the surface, we start to have the low pressure cell that forms and at this stage we can start to see our clouds that are steadily starting to form as the process continues and the low pressure cell at the surface continues to intensify then our mid latitude cyclone is ready to continue and progress into the, the mature stage now this stage is very complex and as a result i'm gonna pause the video just a bit here and then i need to enlarge this diagram here so that we can dive right into it all right guys let us continue the mature stage of the mid-latitude cyclone now what we are having here is the mature stage these two diagrams they are showing you the same stage of a mid-latitude cyclone these diagrams they are showing you the plan view of the mature stage and this one shows you the cross section of the mid latitude cyclone please make sure that you uh, note the difference between these two diagrams both of them they represent the mature stage now let us look first onto the plan view of the mid latitude cyclone in its mature stage so how do we see 
If we are given this on a synoptic weather chart, how are we going to be able to identify that this is the mature stage of the mid-latitude cyclone? Firstly, one thing, an idea that is going to give it away that this is the mature stage, we should be able to see our well-developed front, which means that our cold front and our warm front Both of these fronts, they need to be clearly visible so that we can see them that this is the cold front and this is the warm front. Now, once they are fully developed, we can say that with confidence that this is the mature stage of the mid-latitude cyclone. Another clue will be our warm sector. This area that is located between the two fronts here, we call it the warm sector. It needs to create a clear, visible V shape in between to tell us that this is the mature stage of the mid-latitude cyclone. Another clue that we are going to see, we should see a low pressure system at the apex with a pressure reading less than a thousand hectare pascals something like 996 hpa now hpa stands for hectopascals and it is a unit of measurement for a pressure every time even if they ask you what is the pressure reading at the center of the system you are not going to write 996 only you are going to write 996 hectopascals so that we can be able to credit you full marks. Are we together? Wonderful. I know that you are paying attention. Now, if you look at this diagram, this diagram will also give you a clue about the hemisphere where this cyclone is occurring. In the northern hemisphere, air circulates anti-clockwise around a low pressure system but in the southern hemisphere like this diagram air will rotate in a clockwise direction air rotates in a clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere are we together now let us come to this diagram here this is what we call the cross section of a mid latitude cyclone this steep gradient here shows the cold front and please when we are drawing the cross section we are not going to include these triangles that you see and these semicircles that represent the warm front here you are going to draw your cold front in this way that shows a steep pressure gradient you are going to draw your warm front that shows that the warm front has a gentle pressure gradient now we are going to label our cross section together firstly we are having a giant towering anvil shaped uh, cloud that we call the cumulonimbus cloud a dark towering cumulonimbus clouds that is anvil shaped when you have to describe the shape of the cumulonimbus cloud and along it is located along the cold front it is the reason why the cold front brings along heavy precipitation so along the cold front towering cumulonimbus cloud you have heavy rainfall this heavy rainfall is caused by the cumulonimbus cloud which we are going to get to its formation in a short bit Along the warm front, here we are having small clouds. These clouds, they are either they can be alto stratus clouds, they can be nimbo stratus clouds, but they do not bring heavy rainfall. What do they bring? They bring showers. They bring showers, light rainfall, not heavy rainfall now the formation of the cumulonimbus cloud because in the warm sector here we are having warm air and behind the cold front we are having the cold air in the cold sector when 
this cold air since it is moving eastwards from west to east it comes across the warm air that is found in the warm sector and what happens when the two air masses come together they do not mix but what happens because the cold air is heavy and dense this cold air is going to sink it is going to subside or sink and as a result the warm air that is found in the warm sector here will rise along the cold front will rise along the cold front higher and higher and higher due to the steep pressure gradient of the cold front now this allows this warm air to rise higher in the atmosphere to create this giant towering envelope shape cloud that we refer to as the cumulonimbus cloud and this cumulonimbus cloud will bring about heavy precipitation in terms of rainfall are we together yes so please make sure that when you are supposed to draw a cross section this is what you are going to draw and if you are supposed to represent a plan view of a mature stage this is what you are supposed to draw please make sure that you understand the difference when it comes to these two diagrams now following here is what we call the occlusion stage so guys i'm not going to say anything about the occlusion stage unfortunately but what we are going to say with the occlusion stage unfortunately is that in the occlusion stage the cold front since it is more dense it moves faster than the warm front it eventually catches up with the warm front undercuts it and force the warm air to rise up until the system can dissipate completely now with occlusion importantly it is also important for you that it is important to tata it is also important yes to note that uh, occlusion can either be cold front occlusion or warm front occlusion that is determined by where we find our coldest air in the cold front occlusion the coldest air is found behind the cold front and in the warm front occlusion the coldest air is found ahead of the warm front and that is how our lesson is going to end for today thank you very much for tuning in and i trust that i'm going to see you in our in the next video of which we will be discussing the questions relating to mid-latitude cyclones that video is dropping soon please stay tuned and keep in touch don't forget to subscribe and like the video i'll see you in the next